Today we're going to talk about five different red wines. Now these are some of the key grape varietals and most famous reds in the world. So first we're going to start off with the lightest Pinot Noir. So Pinot Noir is a thin skin red grape varietal grown all over the world but more specifically and more popularly in places like Burgundy, California, and Oregon. So Pinot Noir produces light, finessed, delicate red wines, and because of those thin grape skins, they're pretty finicky and not so high in tannins, which is kind of like that dry pucker that you get from bolder, heavier red wines. Next is Merlot. Now this is a Bordeaux blend from the right bank that is primarily Merlot. With that said, Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon from the area of Bordeaux which is on the western, southwestern side of France. Now Merlot, when it's from Bordeaux in France, it tends to be a little bit softer, and when it's grown on the right bank and put into the blends with those soft clay soils, it becomes a smooth addition to the wine. And Merlot kind of gets a bad rap from, I think it was Sideways, whatever movie it was. It's all good, don't pay attention to that, it's just propaganda. But anyways, Merlot is a little bit lighter bodied than uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, and it's a lot easier to see that in other areas, because they are pretty similar, Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon, when they're put together in the blends of Bordeaux. But all in all, Merlot tends to be more of like a medium bodied wine, with lighter fruits than Cabernet Sauvignon, some blue fruits, I like to say, and a little bit less tannic. Now Cabernet Sauvignon, the next one in our lineup, is grown all over the world as well, obviously like I was just saying, in Bordeaux with Merlot. Those are the top two of the five grape varietals allowed in their red blends. Cabernet Sauvignon, the grapes are smaller, and because of that, the skins have a little bit higher ratio, juice to skin ratio, and that makes the wines more tannic. Now the tannins are what kind of gives you, I like to say, hairy mouthfeel, which I know is an interesting descriptor, but that's the best one I got, in my opinion. It kind of gives you that pucker on your cheeks, makes them suck in a little bit. Not a sour pucker, a dry pucker. So Cabernet Sauvignon is a little more fruit forward, grown all over the world, it's very famous in Napa Valley, of course in the Bordeaux wines, but it doesn't usually say Cabernet Sauvignon, it says Bordeaux. So you gotta watch for that. And if you want to know how to tell if it's more Cabernet Sauvignon or more Merlot dominant blends, watch my video on entry to Bordeaux. So next, Shiraz. So Shiraz is the same thing as Syrah genetically just whenever it's from places in the Southern Hemisphere, like Australia and South Africa. So Syrah is grown all over the world. This example, however, is from Hunter Valley in Australia. Now, Shiraz is very big and bold and tannic, and in the last 20 years or so has made a great claim to fame. These wines are awesome, dark fruits, and even have a little bit of white wines blended in sometimes to, let, to soften the blow, add aromatics, and uh, just make the wine a little bit more approachable. Zinfandel, when it's done right, can be awesome wine. Now they can get really high up there in alcohol and sometimes taste a little over extracted, being at 16 or 17 percent, which is really high. Ports are at 19 to 21 percent and those, the alcohol really comes through. So with that said, Check out the alcohol percentage, and depending on what you like, you can kind of form a basis on what to get. Now, most of California's Zinfandel production comes from Lodi. Over 40% is produced in Lodi, which is the same area that's talked about in the Credence Clearwater song. Now, this Zinfandel that I have here is a 2008, and it's drinking fantastically right now. The lifespan for Zinfandel, it's probably getting close to being at its peak. I wouldn't age that too much longer. Now most of them are heavier bodied and wouldn't have a problem cellaring for five years or so after the vintage date. So if you're looking for some full bodied wines, try these last four that I talked about. 
And if you are looking for an entry red or a lighter red, go with the Pinot Noir. They're less in tannins, that dry pucker, and more approachable. And if it's hot outside, Pinot Noir, throw a slight chill on it, you'll be all set. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day.